Welcome back everybody, today I'm back with my 46th update video. Now in these update videos I go back to 10 past product reviews in order and take a look at the original review and see how that went and let you know if anything has changed since my original video was posted because I do try to use all these products after my review is over. The products in this video span from numbers 451 to 460 which is November of 22 to January of 23. So without further delay let's get right to update number 46. This was number 451, which are Christmas magnets. Now these magnets in certain lighting conditions almost look like they're lit up. So it's kind of an interesting way to decorate for Christmas. Let's first flash back to see how my original review went. When you shine light on it, it actually looks like a string of holiday lights. I mean, it's a pretty simple decoration, but I think it's pretty good. There really isn't much to it. Very easy to install. At the right angle, it does look nice and reflective. Here we go, garage door test and see how it goes. I'm just going to go quickly through here and see how it looks. Can I do one on each? Even though it doesn't lay flat, I think that's still okay. So this part of my car isn't even metal. Look at this. So I can't put it there. I'll put a couple up here because this part is metal. Can't put it on my, on my hood either. It's not, it's not sticking, so can't do it. All right, I'm currently going about 30 miles an hour. I don't know if anything's falling off or not. Hopefully not. I've been driving for about 15 minutes. Let's get out of the car and see if the magnets are still there. All right, so I'm happy to report they are still there. They didn't look like they moved at all. And the couple on the back, they are still in place as well. It looks good when the light hits them. It really, it kind of does. This looks actually better on the black. It really stands out on this. It seems to stand out both in the daytime and the nighttime. So I think these are kind of a success. You know, at the right angle, with the right amount of light, they look like they're lit up. For something down and dirty, kind of easy to decorate in areas that aren't usually decorated, like your car or your garage door. Not too bad, really. All right, so as you might notice there, it's a little bit curved. What happened was, I mean, I put these away after Christmas instead of my garage, and now it's Las Vegas, and it gets kind of warm here in the summertime, so they did kind of curl up over time, but I put them back in my garage door for the second Christmas in a row, and they did pretty well. I'm not sure how long they're gonna hold up over time, but I got two Christmases out of them. If they curl up anymore, they might be unusable, but at the very least, I got two, uh, two uses out of them, so really not too bad. Number 452 was a product on Shark Tank called Ornament Anchor, which is a different way of putting your ornaments on your tree. Let's first flash back to the original review and see how that went. It supposedly allows you to hold your ornaments on the tree more securely than traditional hooks. Now what you're supposed to do is feed the end of this loop through the opening of your ornament. And once you've done that, you take this end and go through the end of the loop. Pull it tight, push this button down, and then this goes over the branch and you tighten like that. It's gonna pick this random branch here. All right, now what we do here is squeeze the button again to pull it up and then it is locked in place and it's not going anywhere. You can like shoot it like a, like a slingshot. It is not going anywhere. Squeeze it together and pull it up. It is locked and loaded. I'm getting used to the ornament anchor application process. I'm not going to say it's as easy as hooking it onto a, a branch with the hook, but on the other hand, it's more secure. So a bit of a trade off, I guess. You don't have to be really dainty with the ornament anchor. It's pretty tough. It seems like you can kind of go on there more aggressively and not worry about it falling off. Let me try shaking the tree around a little bit and see if anything falls off. When I was a kid, we would take these pipe cleaners and just make hooks out of those. And you can actually affix those right to the branch and they're pretty sturdy. Put it over the branch, squeeze it together. And yeah, it's, it's pretty solid too. All right, it's very secure. It's very secure. The pipe cleaner was also secure, but this one is quite secure. Let's do a couple more. All right, it goes over these small branches much easier. And once again, it is secure. For comparison's sake, I'm gonna try one with the pipe cleaner and one with this janky looking beat up hook. Who knows how old that thing is. All right, I've got a few from the ornament anchor. I've got a pipe cleaner and I've got a hook. Let me shake the tree around and see what happens. Well, the ornament anchors are doing well. So is the pipe cleaner. If you like what you see in the advertising, you will not be disappointed with the ornament anchor. And while it does hold ornaments better than traditional hooks, my old school pipe cleaner technique seemed to work about as well. So after Christmas 22 was over, I put all my ornaments away and left the ornament anchors on them. And I ended up reusing them again in 23. Now I just put my Christmas stuff away so I don't really feel like getting them back out again. But they did hold up, so I think they do work and they hold up over time. I still think they're kind of expensive and not necessarily better than other options out there, but they do work.
Number 453 was this ottoman, which can convert from an ottoman to a chair, to a bed, to a recliner. In my review, I wanted to see if it was worth a $300 price tag, so here's how my review went. It supposedly converts from an ottoman to a chair, to a recliner, to a bed. That's, that's interesting. This unit does not require any assembly. Yes. I, I guess that's it. It's a very large seat. If I had to compare it to the ottoman, just as an ottoman, it seemed more comfortable than this. This back is not, it's not particularly comfortable. It's very deep. It does seem like the seat part is a lot deeper than the back is. First, we're supposed to push this all the way up so that it can kind of release it. Now we're we'll open the chair cushion until it stops. Put the legs down like that. Bring this down. Whoa. It may not be the most comfortable bed I've ever laid on, but it does work. This is much better than the chair because the way it contours your body. As a chair, it felt a bit awkward. As a lounger, it feels pretty good. It's, it's good for like kind of an emergency need to crash somewhere kind of bed, but I don't know about every night. My upper and lower back are both sore today. It might seem a bit expensive, but when you consider the fact that you can get four pieces of furniture out of it, it really isn't that bad. All right, so in over a year of owning this, it's barely been used as a bed or a chair or recliner. It's almost exclusively been used as an ottoman. Is it worth $300? I'm not sure, but it is multifunctional. A lot of people like it. I just wish I had more use for it than just an ottoman. Number 454 was a turtle travel pillow. Now I know it looks like I've got a neck brace on, but this is supposed to be a travel pillow. Let's flash back to the original review and see how that went. Step number one, separate the Velcro. Step number two is extend it to arm's length. My thought is, if I'm on a plane, am I gonna hit my fellow passengers? I don't know. Step number three is to place it behind your neck. This goes right here and, is that right? I guess you don't have to cover your mouth, but I guess that's right. Well, maybe. Not bad, really, I don't think. It's a little bit awkward because you have to stretch it out horizontally and you got people on both sides of you. I feel like a bobblehead. You know, like it's kind of balancing on my shoulder. It kind of pushes on my cheek too. I feel like I just got back from the dentist because one side works and one side doesn't. But it does have its fans and if you're looking for a travel pillow and it's not the typical design, this would be worth a look. All right, so I've traveled several times since that video was posted and not once did I take the turtle travel pillow with me. The good news is that it's definitely more compact than other travel pillows, but to me, it's not something that I really like to use. I don't like being relegated to one side and not the other. It's a little bit awkward to put on, so this one ended up unfortunately in the boneyard. Number 455 was an interesting squeegee brush called the Broomby brush with dustpan. It's kind of a multi-purpose item that can be used for windows, floors, and counters, and let's see how my original review went. Now it's a squeegee type brush that can supposedly clean up a variety of messes, but does it really work? They say it cleans every nook and cranny. Versatile can pick up glass, spills, dust, coffee, and more. I want to try to just sweep it up. It did pick up most of the flower. I would say it's a pretty good job. The flower does kind of get stuck on here, but it probably would for most things anyways. All right, that worked actually quite nicely on the cracker crumbs. All right, it does look good as new. Let me dry this off and keep cleaning. So I'm kind of liking this already. Oh, nice job. Okay, well, it seems a little bit flimsier than the shower squeegee, but it does have good coverage. It folds back just a little bit, but I think it's still solid enough that it's not leaving a lot behind. Still far better than this flimsy piece of junk. Bailey. I mean, cleaning up spills with a squeegee on the floor is a little bit difficult because you are going to be leaving a little bit. Uh, pretty good first swipe there. And 
pretty good, pretty good. So overall, I think the Broomby brush is pretty good for small dry spills. And although it can work as a squeegee, I don't think it's really a substitute for the real thing. Now I used this one for a little while for specific cleanups, but I actually can't find it. I didn't really use it that often. I never really used it for floors or for windows. I feel like a broom for floors or a squeegee for windows is better for those applications. But I actually liked it for countertop cleanups of dry items only. I know it's very situational, but it was good for that. I'll probably use it again if I can find it. Number 456 is the Hamilton Beach Breakfast Sandwich Maker. This is kind of a classic item. It's been around for a long time. I tried it out and I really liked it. And here's how my review went. And we're supposed to top it with Canadian bacon and a slice of cheese, which is square, which that's going to be interesting. Now we're lower this one so we expose the top ring. They say puncture it with a fork. And top it with the top bun gently and close it gently. And now we wait. We're going to go five minutes. One minute in, and I don't see anything on the sides, but I do see some egg back there. All right, there we go. Rotate this handle all the way this way. Lift the cover. Lift the rings. Lift this ring. Oh, it's falling apart, but maybe it's going to work. Let's see. Well, wow, that's actually that's actually pretty good. That's not bad at all. It's a, it's a crisp 260 in there, so it's a uh, nice and warm. As soon as I close the lid, I saw some of that. We got some coming out of the front as well. Raise this up. It looks done. It sounds done. It smells done. All right, here is the uh, here's the final product. It's easy to use. It's easy to clean. It's compact, and it does exactly what it's supposed to. All right, so I've probably used this maybe about once or twice a month ever since I've gotten it. And I do like it. It's, it's a good product. If you like breakfast sandwiches, this is kind of a no-brainer. But I have to admit, there were a few occasions along the line where I thought about making a breakfast sandwich and I thought about the cleanup process and I just skipped it. Now, the rings are pretty easy to clean. You can put those in the sink. This part's not supposed to be submerged, so you have to kind of get in there with a sponge. There's little crevices back there. Egg almost always drips out of the back. I'm not sure that's really a big deal. To me, it's a great product. But there were a couple occasions I didn't use it because I didn't feel like cleaning it. Number 457 was a collection of Coke gadgets I got at the Coke store down on the Las Vegas Strip. It was kind of a fun collection to test, and here's how my original review went. I'm here at the Coke store in Las Vegas, and I'm gonna go inside and see what gadgets they have, and I'm gonna go home and test them out. A $7.95 ice cube tray. This they come out of here easily, that's nice. There's not a lot of them, but they're attractive. All right, once they get in a glass of water, they, they're gonna melt quick. Kind of generic looking glasses. They almost feel like, like novelty glasses. It's a nice tent that is not polarized. For 11 bucks, they really aren't that bad. These cost 300, these are 11. Coke USB power bank. Plugging in the power bank. Plugging it into the phone. And you can see from this light that it is charging right now. We're at 51% which means in about an hour and a half, I got a 41% battery charge. It's not the best charging bank out there, but it's probably one of the best looking. Pocket utensils, that's pretty small. Let me go wash these off and then start eating. This is a very small knife, look at that. These almost feel like children's utensils. The spoon is a pretty decent size. It's kind of like a, it's a small spoon, but not too small. They work and the knife actually cuts for how small it is, but it is very small. A stainless steel Coke can basically about 200 degrees fahrenheit so nice and warm all right it's been exactly four hours let's check it out i would say it's it's warm but it's not hot all right four ice cubes and cold water i mean it kept it pretty cold for 12 hours it didn't keep it ice cold but it kept it in the 40 i think it's pretty good it is an ice cream scoop okay well it cuts through the ice cream pretty nicely and it forms a decent size scoop it's just because the scoop isn't as deep as the z-roll you can't really get as, as perfectly formed scoops. The function is good. The style is great. Float and slushy maker. All right, it's out of the freezer. Put it in the inner sleeve. Now they say wait a minute or two and then start scraping every minute or two. Ice is forming, so we are making progress here. It's looking pretty slushy-like. This is what we got. 
I think it looks it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. All right, so that's it. I guess if I had to give all these a collective grade, I'd give them an A for style, probably a C for function, and maybe a D for the price. Now, admittedly, a lot of those products are just kind of novelty items or those for, for, for collectors only. Perhaps surprisingly, the sunglasses I ended up using on a semi-regular basis. And that's mainly because I don't mind losing a pair of $11 glasses. I do care about losing a $300 pair. And the fact that I didn't care about losing them for some reason means I won't lose them. When I don't want to lose them is when I tend to lose them. Not a bad pair of sunglasses for the price and really the only product that I got from that collection that I continue to use. Number 458 is right there, which is the Bionic Floodlight, which is an as seen on TV solar light. As you can see, it's next to its older sibling, the Bionic Spotlight. But let's take a look back at the original review and see how that went. All right, there it is. I was all excited about my first day of filming. As it turns out, it's, it's overcast today. I'm right in front of it. There he goes, okay, came on. About, I'm about 15, 20 feet away. I'm noticing this, it's not particularly bright. Now it is near the ground, so maybe that's something to do with it. Maybe if it was higher off the ground, it wouldn't, it would be a little bit brighter, but down there, it's not, I'm not too impressed. Bailey, what are you doing? All right, we kind of got a lucky bonus. It just started raining out here. We'll have to see how well it holds up in the rain. I'm gonna move it out front though, and tonight I'm gonna test it out on the driveway to see how it works out there. The Bionic Floodlight next to its older sibling, the Bionic Spotlight. Oh, this, I got both of them in here right now. Oh, that's how they both look. They both came out at the same time. They picked me up. As you can see, there it is. So it has a good range to it. To me, it seems pretty bright. It's kind of blasting me right in the face here. Now, they also say you're not supposed to use the Bionic Floodlight next to an existing light source. I got them right next to each other and they're both working. So maybe they're being a little cautious because to me, it works. All right, here we go, 6.30 in the morning. Let's see if it's still working. Oh yeah. So in the end, I think the Bionic Floodlight is a respectable outdoor solar light. All right, so obviously it's still holding up. The range seems like it's still as good. The battery life seems like it's still as good. So as far as I'm concerned, I have no complaints about it. It still works perfectly. And even though it's not supposed to work next to another light, they're both still working. So as far as I'm concerned, Bionic Floodlight and Spotlight still work. Number 459 was a collection of Timu gadgets. Now I did this one in late 22 and early 23 when Timu was kind of new to a lot of people. I tested out nine gadgets and here's how that went. Let's start with the cheapest of the bunch and that is this $1.98 thermometer. Now the thermometer from Timu, here we go. Wow, was that slow. All right, I'm gonna say that's a loss anyways. All right, so I've been wearing these for a while. And my experience has been pretty good actually. All right, here we go. Timu on the left, Ray-Bans on the right, you can see they're not only are they a similar tint, but they're also a similar darkness. And I've got to say that these frames are among the best that I've tried. It's the two dollar and ninety eight cent solar light. I mean, it does look it does look nice. It's just not very large. If you look at the photo in the listing from where I ordered it, this is way smaller. So you're gonna have to manually turn this on and off when you want to use it. So I don't know. I think it looks nice, but other than that. I'm not too impressed. Three dollar and ninety eight cent bottle opener. I compared it to the very similar pop the top that I reviewed a couple years ago, and here's what happened. <laughs> Uh oh, okay. Wow, it flew off. Oh, it's sticking to him. I didn't know it was magnetic. As cheap as this is, it worked very well. Let's take a close look at this flashlight, shall we? It feels pretty cheap overall, just cheap plastic. There's a power button here that toggles through the different modes. It really isn't, isn't that bad of a flashlight. It's pretty wide and it's, it's bright enough. I think it does a pretty good job of lighting up the entire yard. It's got a pretty good range on it. I mean, it doesn't last a long time. Battery life isn't great, but it is rechargeable. So I don't know. I've paid a lot more for not much better. How stylish is this now? There you go. All right, here's the first mode, which is just the, the center larger light. Now here's the mode with the four outer lights and not the inner light. Now here's all the lights. You can actually adjust it with this hinge right here. So honestly, for the price, not that bad really. $4.98 tablet. Your fingernail can actually make marks on there, which it does. It'd be nice if you could erase part of it instead of just all of it at once. All right, press the button, gone. I guess you could do something like that. That might be a good use for it. I mean, it does feel very flimsy, very cheap, but you know, it does work. Handheld game system, which looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? They say 401, there are 400 games on here. I mean, this this is pretty, this is pretty much it. This is it. Man, I feel like I'm 13 years old seeing that. 
No high score, so it does not save your high scores on some of the games. All right, let's try these $10 Timu shoes now. The, the soles feel pretty good. This part feels pretty cheap, but you never know, I guess, right? Size seems okay. They, f they feel kind of comfortable. Let me stand up. I mean, just standing in them, they don't feel so bad. I mean, they're not real heavy duty shoes. And the only problem I have when this, there's almost no arch for 10 bucks. It's a pretty good deal. Overall, I'm gonna say it's a pretty fun site and there are some deals to be had there, but just remember that there's gonna be some duds in the bunch. Now I've done quite a few Timu products since that video was posted and I have kind of mixed feelings about the site, but of that original collection, I used the headlamp for a while, but I ended up just kind of ended up in my drawer and I stopped using it. But the one of that group I still use is the flashlight, surprisingly. this It's a cheap flashlight. There's nothing really spectacular about it. It's just the fact that it was so cheap, I'm not really worried about losing it. Uh, it's held up. I've dropped it. So, you know, for, for the money, I think I got my money's worth. So I tested nine products, only end up using one. Is that a good deal? I'm not really sure. Number 460 was a collection of interesting kitchen gadgets. Let's first flash back to the original review and see how that went. Replacement handle for broken handles or it allows you to add a handle to a pot that doesn't have one in the first place. Put that over the lip and then crank the handle over until it locks in place. And then we should have what is basically a replacement handle. Let's see how sturdy that is. I would say that's pretty sturdy. Press this button. So it goes over the lip. Crank it. Oh, that doesn't close very easily, but this could be bad. Oh, it's slipping. Oh, it did slip a little bit. Oh, I mean, you're not going to be doing this, but, but it does seem sturdy enough to move things from place to place. It's holding. I don't know if I have a total confidence in it, but it's holding. There is no way this is gonna hold that. Look at that, slips right off. Okay, well, so this will peel or strip corn. Oh, wow. Okay, that worked, that worked very well. The first pass went much better than I expected, so let's keep going. Wow, it's, it just glides through it like butter. It's a very quick process. Here we go, one more ear oven push puller gadget this supposedly allows you to push or pull your oven rack without getting your hands burnt so you can just pull it your rack out easily get your stuff off there push it back in your hands are nowhere near the danger zone pretty simple now normally with an oven mitt you would reach in there and you're kind of even still getting your arms near there but with this it looks like you can just kind of pull it out and push it back in pull it out push it back in. I guess it kind of works, right? I mean, I guess you could pull it out, but it doesn't seem ideal for this. It seems to work pretty well. It's a lemon juicer squeezer. You've got, on this end, you've got a reamer, which is good for juicing, a pulp and seed catcher, a channel knife, and a zester built right in. That seems like it works pretty well. Like, okay, I'm getting something off of it. Yeah, okay. I'm still getting seeds in there. I'm still getting seeds in there, even with the catcher there. And it's kind, of, it's kind of messy anyways. I mean, it does work. I didn't catch hardly anything in there. I want to catch these seeds in the pulp. We have seeds caught in the seed catcher. Lots of juice. The juice is real. They're situational at best, but they do seem to work for some people some of the time. Now of that collection, the one I used the most for a while was the rack puller. Now it seems kind of situational and better for smaller ovens where space is tight. The rack puller was good for countertop ovens. It's kind of situational, but none of those items ended up in my kitchen long term. Well, that's it for this update. I would say my favorites of the bunch would be the Hamilton Beach breakfast sandwich maker and probably the Bionic floodlight because it's still used every day. My least favorite of the bunch is probably the Timu thermometer. But that's all I've got. I'll be back in about another month of my next update video. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.